So uh, this is the point in the ceremony where I uh, am supposed to provide you the last word. And um, I actually wrote it out. And uh, I would like to skip the reading of it, given the length of the ceremony and the coldness that we experience in the tent. So I will give you a thumbnail summary and hope the thumbnail summary inspires you to read it when we send it out to you. So what it basically argues is pretty simple. Um, it starts from the premise you're going out at an unusual time, and therefore the question of what is to be done is pretty obvious. It raises the issue, what it, does it mean to return to normalcy after the pandemic? And what faces us in that normalcy? And I raise the issue of what is the purpose of a college or an institution of learning in that context? And I poke a little fun at the tagline you all know about Bard, a place to think. And I quote from Spinoza at the end of his Ethics, where he argues, in life, therefore, it is especially useful to perfect, as far as we can, our intellect or reason. In this one thing consists the human being's highest happiness. Spinoza makes a connection between the use of your reason and happiness, and basically believes that our task is to perfect our understanding of the world. And I make reference to Spinoza's notion of a pantheist notion of the universe, of all diversity being one. And that makes all of us, in a way, equal and part of a reality that we can understand using intuition, reason, and our imagination. And that leads to happiness, that there's a connection between knowing and a sense of happiness, that the understanding of the world and our expanding our knowledge is connected to the well-being of people. And I posit five things that you should think about as we return to normal. One is that freedom and democracy and social justice cannot be achieved virtually. There is no technological surrogate for the personal and social realities we have to face. We cannot remain isolated and manipulated by large companies and devices. We actually cannot communicate through text, apps, posting, and social networks. We cannot allow a democracy to be transformed by the technology that ultimately undermines it. We can't hide behind the technology if we're going to have a pluralist world. The second thing is that we actually have to stick with notions of a rational argument to convince people. We have to acknowledge our fallibility. We have to be willing to change our minds. We have to be willing to talk to people who don't agree with us. We cannot actually act against them by ostracizing them, banishing them. We cannot turn every accusation into a truth. We cannot replace a court of justice with a court of public opinion on social media. We have to make a distinction between what is false and what is true, because actually in the understanding of the world, there is a real distinction. And we cannot actually continue to take pleasure in the punishment of others. We can't actually think justice is a sense of equality in what we have experienced transferred to others. That love is a sign of understanding. It's not a mushy emotion. It's not a romantic idea. It actually is the result of understanding that we're in the same predicament on the same planet 
The pandemic has shown us that it is absolutely indiscriminate in its ability to harm and to create sickness and death, just as the environmental challenge doesn't discriminate between anyone wherever they live, it affects us all, albeit in different ways. And the last thing I urge is that um, we recognize what makes us same and not different for all the identities we celebrate. That whatever we identify ourselves as being, we are actually all human. And in that humanity, we share a fundamental equality and a fundamental shared destiny. And that we need to challenge the orthodoxies we believe are right, and we have to shed a kind of Puritan sense of superiority. We have to tolerate dissent. We have to embrace the dissenter. We have to take the time to convince the dissenter. We cannot render them silent and make believe they don't exist. We have to accept the God, in my view, of Spinoza and Einstein. And that is the God on which this institution is based. That the world is knowable by us, that it encompasses everything from the arts to science, and that it provides us the opportunity to bring happiness to ourselves and others through the pursuit of knowledge. And when we do that, we run the risk of being unpopular. And I quote from the last line of Spinoza's Ethics in which he writes, all things excellent are as difficult as they are rare. You are excellent, you are rare. Don't relinquish that opportunity and that pattern of life. Congratulations to all of you.